Welcome to Solid Edging Inventor HSM. Today I'm going to cut a part that's going to go into food service and what I need to do with this is to make sure that it's as close as possible to being a surface finish that requires no polishing. For the sake of brevity I'm going to go through the steps of the first pocket that I've cut and these as we go through this part all of the conditions for the end mills that you see in there, the speeds and the feeds and whatnot, have been proven in an actual part that has been cut. So these are all real tolerances and speeds and feeds. In any case, let us begin. Our setup two is the top here. And our first tool path is going to be an adaptive. Let's go through here and I'll show you how I picked what it was necessary to make this work right. The machining boundary is the perimeter of the cavity. The stock selections, I don't need to worry about that. We do need to worry about heights. For the purpose of this one, the stock top or the part top would work for the actual top. And then what I did here was as for the bottom height, I picked selection, and I went in here and moused over that line that's highlighted in there, and selected that for the bottom reference minus a 0.05. Since I'm dealing with an end mill that has a 0.06 radius, I probably ought to go ahead and bump that up to a 0.06 at least. Well, let's make it 0.07 to be safe. And okay. We'll let that recalculate. Now we have our initial roughing path. Next, I want to come in here and cut a ledge for a tri-clamp fitting. So this will be the operation for that. As you can see, it's just simply a couple of passes around there on that ledge to clean it up on the side uh, axially and radially. Once again, the selection was at the bottom inside corner uh, because the cam program will automatically recognize that as the cut to situation. I don't have to pick top height or bottom height because the contour that was selected automatically recognizes where I want to cut to. Uh, that's something that I have to say in HSM. There's a lot of hidden intelligence in here. In a lot of programs, you're going to have to pick each one of these parameters. Uh, normally, you might have to expect to have filled in two or three additional parameters to get this particular cut path done. All you have to do here is, is select that one profile, and that's all the information that it needs. Anyway... I had a little step over in this particular one. You can see uh, the tolerances and whatnot that are in there. And of course the speeds and feeds for this particular end mill. Next is another contour cut. This is a 3D contour cut. And it's pretty handy for doing some roughing in various places. And one of the things I like about this is the ability to cut two specific surfaces. Now, I've picked this boundary, and that's the boundary that I want to cut to. I've also selected for the top reference height this right here has assigned my top for the cut height. And then once again, 
I've come down here and the orange highlighted line was my selection for the bottom height and minus 0.1 to make sure I got past all of the uh, the bore and the cavity there. Maximum step down. I didn't want to have a whole lot left to clean up. Now, uh, I want to you pay attention to something here. On the radial stock, I want this surface that's highlighted to be a finish cut condition when I'm done. So I've left zero, basically, or one-tenth on radial. And on the axial stock to leave, which will be the cuts in here on the surfaces, I've left one thousandth because we're going to finish that up with our final cleaning uh, finishing path. In any case, you see the speeds and feeds. We'll click through here and you can see the various parameters. Once again, the most important thing here is the stock to leave is important on this particular cut path. And we have all that. Now, on this particular one, the only parts I have to finish are the ones that were not completely done axially. So this is the path that's going to finish that and blend everything together into the side wall of the cavity. This is how I pick the parameters for this one. Now that's the machining boundary. But we also have avoid surfaces here. And our avoid surfaces are highlighted. That's what was selected for the avoid. Once again, this is our top height, which was selected. And our bottom reference, once again, is the orange highlighted line and 0.10 below it. This is a true finish pass now, so we don't get to go real fast. But I've got the uh, half inch 0.06 bullnose end mill, 5,000 RPM at 40 inches a minute, yields a very nice finish. Notice the tolerance. Now, radial stock to leave is set to zero. But the axial stock to leave, you'll find to make sure you get all of what was left from the prior tool paths. Uh, I've set mine to 5 tenths minus. And this will clean up just fine. And that removes all of my tool marks. But this also gives me, since I have a minus figure only on axial and not on radial, I have a perfect blend in the wall from the radius of the part in there to the sidewall. In any case, we'll cancel that. And we have a cut path. What I want to do now is show you an additional thing. If I like this tool path, I can go ahead and store as a template. Now I've gone through here and I've stored these four tool paths as templates. And the reason for that is, is I have another exact hole on the side of this block that has to be cut too. So we'll go ahead, new setup, and I'm going to this is front cavity I do not need to have any additional stock and XYZ is aligned correctly so we will accept that. Now, what I want to do, create from template. And you'll notice in here that if you go to this folder that's highlighted right here, 
you can make subfolders in there. And I made a subfolder in there that was for this particular one. In any case, let's go create template and valve block rough. Now in here, you will have to come and pick the boundary and you will have to pick the bottom again uh, for some reason and I don't know what the particular reason is the template didn't come through where it picked those surfaces it may be that I don't know how to do it correctly in any case we're going to pick that for the bottom reference I didn't update this in the template so I'm going to go ahead and just update it here and OK. The nice thing is, is I know I've got another cavity to cut that's exactly like this, so I save all the time setting this up. Uh, basically, I have very few choices to make when I bring it in as a template. Okay, we have that. Our next one is going to be we're going to cut the contour for the tri-clamp fitting and what we're going to pick is that okay everything else is in there and now we're going to go for the contour cut cavity edit once again I'm going to pick that contour. I only have to pick the bottom height and OK. Sorry about that. I grabbed the wrong toolpath. Let's get rid of that and go back. You're going to have to bear with me. It's been a long day today. Let's try this again. And edit. Machining boundary. And selection for the bottom. And OK. Top height will have to evidently didn't like what I picked. So we'll go ahead and for our selection, we're going to pick that. And OK. And our last tool path is the final contour cut, our little scallop rough path. I've really grown to like this scallop. It gives you a true step over in X, Y, and Z. And if you set it for the correct speeds and feeds, it gives you a very nice finish. Uh, once again, we have to edit this little rascal. I'm not lingering over the tool feeds and speeds on this one because I showed them in the first cut path that was similar to this. In any case, the avoid touch surfaces is already picked, but for the sake of showing you again, this is the avoid and the 
machining boundary will be here and we have to pick the top height which will be here and the bottom reference will be here come on and I need to repick that top reference sorry about that okay be difficult Always happens when you want to make a video, it shows some kind of problem. There we go. Sometimes it's a little hard to click on stuff when you're going through the other selections, the other selection heights, that is. Okay. Now, if you go to the blog post that will reference this particular video, I've got some pictures in there of uh, the block and the cut finish and the tri-clamp fitting that's going to be welded in. Uh, and you'll see exactly what it is that I'm accomplishing with all this. In any case, we now have a part. We've done two cavities with uh, one with the initial and then the other one with the templates and that concludes this video I hope you enjoyed it and have a nice day thank you